but so she grabs his hand and just starts praying. And as soon as she starts praying, like his girlfriend like freaks out and she just kind of walks away and storms off. And but then she just starts praying and then he's like, "That's so weird. It's down to a five now." And so she's like, "Let's pray again." And how is it? He's like, "It's gone." And around that time, the the guy with the beer in his hand said, "Hey, I you know." I, I have back pain too, so we pray for him, and then he gets healed. And it was amazing because I started talking to him, and like God just starts downloading all these things about each person. The prophetic starts flowing, and then we start getting all these words over them. And this guy uh, with the beer in his hand, his back gets healed, and then he's just getting rocked. And starts sharing the gospel with him, and then you can see the lights come on, and he actually. Like, like it was clicking, it was resonating with him about just the gospel. And like, so the girlfriend that ran off, Chelsea's like, come here real quick. And then she started, she started getting words over her. And she just said, hey, when you were younger, something, somebody did something really horrible to you. And God says that was never his plan. That was never God's oh, yeah, heart for it. you. That God never planned, like if that wasn't God's intention, God is good. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus brings life. And she starts just kind of tearing up, then like, you know, stonewall, like. And it was funny, because then I, I saw her a picture uh, in my mind of her, like, drawing, and her doing art. So I asked her, I said, hey, do you do do you do you any art or anything like that? And she's like, well, our friends freak out. They're like, yeah, she, she does. She's like, well, it's not that somewhat. She's like, no, you're good. And they start saying just how amazing she is at art. So... But it was cool because, like, I mean, the whole day we were seeing back-to-back -back encounters. But w what was amazing was how easy everything was. It wasn't like we are out there trying to strive to cause something to happen. I mean, it was just literally just a simple stepping out and saying, Hey, is there any way I can bless you? Merry Christmas. How can I bless you today? Is there any, any way I can pray for you? Like, when we first got there, there's this guy walking like this. And he's just kind of limping around and, you know... We're like, hey, can we pray for your knee? And we prayed, and at first, nothing happened. We prayed again, nothing happened. Uh, we prayed again, it got a little better. Then by the fourth or fifth time we prayed, he's like, we can, I could go back to work. And he's like, jump in and... Wow. <laughs> but Jesus, you know, he loves to touch people, and we are his body. We're his hands and feet. So if he wants to touch someone, he's going to use his body. If he wants to give someone a hug, who's he going to use? You. So I don't know. That there's something about celebrating God and getting excited about the things he's doing. But when we worship him, I want you to do me a favor. Treat this like your personal prayer closet. Give God everything. He's worthy. He deserves it. What's it look like for you to worship God with all your heart today?
So, Will Chandler built this pulpit out of scraps wow. and out of reclaimed wood. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. It's prophetic for what God does with us. Yes. He reclaims us and he transforms us into something beautiful. Yes. But yeah, we Thursday night, this was sitting there with a note, and I didn't know his initials was WAC. So it said for WAC from WAC. I'm like, huh, Jesus. So first, before we do anything, we have to sing happy birthday to Sandy. And we got cupcakes to celebrate. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sandy and Alicia. Happy birthday to you. So I have a challenge for everyone in this room. Do not let do not leave without giving her a prophetic word. And I'm not talking like a fuzzy, like, oh this year is going to be really good for you. I'm talking like <laughs> actually seek the Lord for something that's going to be, something that's going to hold weight. God, Because God speaks to his children. God speaks to us. And God really, really loves Sandy. So God will give you something that's going to rock her socks off. Jesus, we love you, God. So let's pray over the offering real quick. That cool pirate box is the offering box. So, so God, we just bless the pirate box. We pray right now in Jesus' name that you bless it, God. That uh, Let that be honoring to you. And we thank you. We praise you, God. I, I pray, though, everyone who gives will give out of just the abundance of their heart, God. They'll give out of just you, God. In Jesus' name, that everyone who gives into there, that it would be a real act of worship. Yeah, I know, I know, buddy. I know. Put it back. <laughs> Leave it in there. <laughs> Zakai, you want prayer over everybody? Just pray for the fire of God full. Amen. <laughs> All right. God? Wait. I pray that the fire of God will fall mm. yes, on Lord. all of us. Yeah. Yes, Lord. <laughs> it will fall down. Yes, Lord. you to believe me and not come through for you. Oh, yeah. yes. I'm just seeing uh, 2020 and the, and the uh, <laughs> whoa, anyway, the, uh, I just see 
sunshine, just bright. Just, I mean, it's going to be a bright, bright year for all of us. Oh, yes, Jesus' Lord. name. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. It's going to be a bright, 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 sunshine day. Amen. Yes. You know what? Let's do this. I can see clearly oh my now gosh. the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. I think it's going to be a bright, 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 sunshine day. I don't know that song is good. The sun of God is bright. That's right. Yeah. No night and day. No <laughs> so yesterday, <laughs> it's like really oh, wow. lit up here. <laughs> so yesterday, when we went out evangelizing, like it was like a, God's always kind of given us this thing where you know it's it's about us taking our relationship with God into the into the open. It's yes. like it's it's about connecting with God and sharing that connection with people around us. But for some reason. Um, yesterday was just like next level easy where I just felt like on cloud nine all day and I, I was, we were just feeling like the peace and the love of God and it was like I was just enjoying Jesus so much and like we saw so many people got healed like we saw like back pain disappear we saw this guy's leg like he was saying got completely healed and he was able to jump on it and my favorite my favorite encounter though was this girl she was she was just, um, she was walking with her head really down low, and she looked really depressed, and she she had half uh, green hair and half purple hair, and her hair was in wow. pigtails, and she was walking on her way to work, and I was like, hey, excuse me, and she's like, yeah, and I was like, do you, do you get back pain, and she's like, yeah, so she's like, how do you know that, and I was like, can we pray over your back, and she's like, yeah. So we prayed over her back, her back pain disappeared, and then I was like, hey, do you know Jesus? And she's just like, she's like, well, and I was like, do you want to know Jesus? Like, not, I'm not talking about, like, re the religious way, but do you want a relationship where Jesus, with Jesus where he'll actually talk to you and he'll actually yeah. use your hands to heal? And she was just like, yeah. And I was like, here, pray this with me. And so I was like, God, I just, and she invited him into her heart. And then I was like, do you want to be filled with the Spirit so that you can prophesy over people? And I said, I, I feel like God is giving you a heart for that. And she's like, yes. So we prayed over her, and she got filled with the Spirit. And she left like, like she looked different. She looked, she had peace in her eyes. And it's like, when she first walked up, it was like this, like, anxiety and this, like, sadness and this, like, downcast. And when she walked away, she walked away vibrant and with peace in her eyes. And I said, you're going to have joy all day today. You're going to just feel the joy of the Lord today. Woo! Yeah. Jesus. So I wanted to read something to everybody here. Um, I really felt like God was speaking to me when I read this. And I feel like this is for everybody. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, yes. sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Uh, I'm going to skip to the to verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above, above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in the word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and Father through him. 
I feel like in the next year and in this next season for everybody, Jesus is saying that it's time to find your life which is hidden in me. Yes. Amen. All the goals, all the promises, this is the year of grace. And I, I have brought you, like, I have, like, brought you out of the land of Egypt. And now you have a straight path, and you can walk, and you just have to step out in faith. And it's right there. The promises are right there. He's saying, just walk with me. Walk with me. I'm here with you. I have so much for you. All my promises are yours. And I love you. Yes, Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, because you have given us this grace, God. You have given us so much, God, to look forward to. And we just say yes to you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Jesus, help me. Worthy God, help. Yes. You know, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> you kind of stuck. <laughs> Jesus. Good. Yeah, just, I got messed up. God, help. God, I ask that you speak something through me coherent. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yes, Jesus. jump back into worship. Oh, you want to share some? Just while I was praying, I just heard God coherently say, like, why do you keep dwelling on the past mistakes that you've made? You know, I've yes. already forgiven you. There's no need to keep bringing it up. Uh, like, it's already gone. It's wiped clean. Like, it doesn't hold you anymore. Amen. And I just feel like everybody just needs to forgive everything that they've done because Jesus has already forgiven us all. Like it doesn't define us. We are new people every single day as we dive deeper into the word and just grow closer. Amen. One day we change. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So something God's been putting in my heart is each one of us in this room has a powerful testimony. And here's the amazing thing. If you grew up in a church and never did anything bad, never touched a drug, you have just as powerful testimony as the crystal meth crazy, you know, like person who became sane and on fire. Why? Because a believer on fire for the Lord is someone who lives in an encounter with God. A testimony is not so much like I came out of garbage and then God brought me to light, though that's part of it. But a testimony is an ongoing encounter with God. Yes. So when people say, what is your testimony? That can mean how you came to salvation, but that could also mean what is God doing in your life right now? Yes. Yeah, okay. not your See, I love this because Psalms, you know, one, one, one. Psalms 111 or 111 it says the works of the Lord are, verse 2 the works of the Lord are great studied by all who have pleasure in them meaning when God works miracles like it's worthy to be studied yes meaning 
When God does something, you look into it, you study, you take, for, and it's for those who take pleasure in the works of God. Those who have pleasure when God intervenes. It's who God is. His works are honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. So when God does something, it's, you know, he makes it to be remembered. The, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He's given food to those who fear him, and he will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared his works to the he has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. See, there's something amazing about the testimony of God. See, it's the testimony of God that actually, you know, it says it's the spirit of prophecy and revelation is the testimony of Jesus Christ. What does that actually mean? The spirit of prophecy, meaning it's prophesying what he's going to do. Yes. See, when we hear the testimonies God does, that's also a prophetic declaration of what God can do in your life. Amen. Of what God will do, what God wants to do. See, Psalm 77 is really interesting. Or interesting. Because it's a psalm of Asaph. And this guy was going through this like troubling time where he can't feel God. He can't see God. He can't. And he's like, I can't figure this out. I can't go forward. He said, I cry out to God with my voice. To God with my voice. He gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. And my hand was stretched out with night. With, or without ceasing, my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. And he's talking about being overwhelmed with depression and grief and anxiety. And I love this. Verse 11 says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your works of old and I will meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Your way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. So what he's saying, what Asaph is saying is, even though I'm going through distress and depression and this and that, I will remember your works and I'll take pleasure in that. I will rejoice in that. I remember when we first started going to the streets, I used to write down like every testimony, you know, just like sit there and just write it and write like just every time God did something crazy and then eventually it just got way too much to write. It was just, you know, you go out and it was like, man, God's like on the move. But I remember times I feel discouraged, I would revisit those testimonies and it would just reignite that passion, reignite that fire and reignite. It's like, oh, that's who God is. See, when God does something in your life, it's, it's something you can hold on to and look to forward and say, okay, God could do more. You know, God multiplied food for the disciples, and he just did all kinds of crazy things. Multiplied food for thousands of people, but then they're on a boat, and it's shaking, and they're freaking out. It's like, well, don't you see? Like, this is God who can multiply food. This is God who controls the storms, and you're freaking out here. But there's something about when we get hungry for the testimony of the Lord. Like, there's something about feeding yourself on the testimony of the Lord. Yes. Like, I love reading old revivalists and just reading, like, just like, you know, Smith Wigglesworth or John G. Lake and Maria Woodworth Eder. And, like, just reading some of the things that, you know, they just go this place, raise the dead, then go this place, and cancer falls out of a guy, then go the, you know, like, reading the, like, insane, insane testimonies. It, it boost your faith yes. you know Gideon the Midianites were taking over Israel and Gideon was like hiding in the wine press like so the Midianites wouldn't take the food and the Lord sees him you know he's, and I love that it says in Judges 6 verse 12 and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said the Lord is with you mighty man of valor 
This is the mighty man of valor hiding in a wine press, and when God sees him, the first thing he declares is mighty man of valor. That's awesome. But then Gideon said, oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has this happened to us? Where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about? Did the, not the Lord bring us up from Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken and delivered us in the hand of the Midianites. His response was, God, this is who you are. Are you not the Lord who delivered Israel from Egypt? Are you not the Lord who does miracles? Are you not the Lord who provides? And that heart, that heart that Gideon had to hold on to the testimony of the Lord, to hold on. And you see, Gideon was in that place where he was seeing a lack and he was longing for something more. He knew the God that they served was able to deliver them, but he's saying, God, where is this God that I grew up hearing about? See, something needs to rise up in our hearts when we read this Bible. Where is the God who multiplies yes. food? Where is the God who raises the dead today? Where is this God? I don't want the distant God that doesn't interact with me. I don't want some God up in the sky who's not involved in my life. I want the God I read about here. See, something needs to rise up in us, but that rising up in us, is it's God. You know, it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God who works in us to will and do according to his purpose. So when you have a hunger to see God move, that's actually God moving in your heart first. But like Gideon, there's something in him that wanted more, that knew that God yes. was the God that could deliver them. And then it says in verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said, Go with this mind of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? It's funny that Gideon was just like, God, where's this God who's going to deliver us? God's like, okay, you're ready. You. I'm choosing you, Gideon. See, I believe God is raising up these kind of people that are like, God, I'm not satisfied with life without yes. you. I'm not satisfied without seeing the move of the Holy Spirit. I'm not satisfied without seeing this Jesus I read about in my life today. And it's when we get that to that place we're no longer satisfied, God says, hey, have I not chosen you, James? Have I not chosen you, Chris? Yes. See, there's something about when we rise up, we're like, I can't live without this. Yes. I mean, I remember reading this Bible. You know, I got saved through a crazy way. I got in a fight with God and I cussed him out. I thought I was all tough. And my sister drug me to church, kicking and screaming. I didn't want to go. And she made me go and I had to sit right next to the pastor. And then... I got wrecked by the Holy Spirit, a demon cast out of me, and next thing you know, like the pastor's answering every question, I shouted at God, and then I'm like, I'm done, that's it, it's over. Game over, check, I'm, I'm his. It's about 15 years ago. Oh, I didn't know what fire was then. But I remember reading the Bible then, and I, I, I got into debating people, and like it was always on my heart to share the gospel. So I remember I would just share my testimony and then see people come to the Lord left and right. And it was like I would go in chat rooms and track people down and just share my testimony. And people come to the Lord. But then I started getting educated and learning how to debate people and science and apologetics. And then I stopped seeing people win, won to the Lord. Why? Because it turned into a debate if I'm right. But I remember reading this Bible and like longing in my heart, like, God, if you still moved like you did in this Bible, this debate wouldn't even happen. Because no one could, could, how could they debate if they just get healed? And I remember reading this, you know, for the first six years of my Christian life with this longing deep inside my heart, like, where is this God I read about? I remember I was in a Christmas party and my friend's parents started talking about going to some healing conference and I'm like, that exists? And I, this hunger was in me but I just didn't know where it was or how to find it or how to do it or anything. But then I just kind of got burnt out in my faith. And, then, and I remember when God challenged me to go all in about 10 years ago, 
God said, I want you to give everything to me. And when I listened, all of a sudden, he just filled me with this fire and changed everything in me. It was like being born again again. But then after that, like my mom went in and she had a, some surgery. She had some clot in her liver. I forgot what it, exactly what it was, but she went in to go get surgery and they couldn't find it anymore. They opened her up and they're like, it's not there. And I was just hungry for miracles. I mean, I remember I came home and what really started is I, I came home and my wife was watching this documentary called Finger God. And I watched it and like all of a sudden people are getting healed and people are like walking on the streets healing people. I'm like, this exists? Like this is happening. Like and so everything in me rose up. And I remember I was in the shower till the water got cold, crying out to God, like, God, bring me around where this is happening. Bring me over. I just I want to see this. I don't care if I even do this. I have to see you move. And something in me where I would fast and pray and cry out to God until like something. And then we watched Furious Love about a week later. And Furious Love, like it's about being love in the darkness. And something in me threw me in situations where I remember walking to work and I saw a lady with a brace on her hand. I walked up to her car window out of nowhere. I'm like, hey, let me pray for you. I just started praying for people and nothing was happening, but something was triggered in me where I had to see God move. Amen. And then eventually, like, I remember I stumbled across a video of Todd White and I'm like praying like, God, is this guy for real? Like, is this, is this real? Then God spoke to me and said, do you want to do that? Well, it's kind of like, duh. Like, I've been, you know, like, and then all of a sudden, like, my wife woke up, her back was hurting. And I remember, like, praying, like, guinea pig, and praying for her, you know, and then all of a sudden, heat filled her back, and she got completely healed, and then from that point on, I started seeing breakthrough with miracles and seeing God move. But first, it started with a hunger where I couldn't be satisfied without seeing it. It's funny how God will woo you in. I had a, we had a friend named Cornelius who we actually gave a ride home because he had such bad scoliosis. He walked like this with a cane and just back, just hunched. And I remember I was walking to work one day, and this is after I've been praying over people and wasn't seeing breakthrough. And all of a sudden, I see him jogging. And I'm like, dude, what happened to you? He said, man, so you're not going to believe this. He said, some teenager, teenagers came up to me and prayed over me and nothing happened. I went home that night and God spoke to me and said, I'm going to heal you tonight. And I just laughed it off. I didn't think it was going to happen. I went to bed and all of a sudden I woke up to a loud snap. His whole back went straight and God completely healed him. And this guy went from walking on a cane like this to where we had to give him rights because he couldn't really walk to he's jogging. It's like, I've been jogging all morning. And you know, God will do things to stir your hunger, but there's something about when, when we delight in God. It's funny how I, I realize religion hates the works of God. Like I remember, I remember being in some churches and around some believers, you start sharing testimonies of God moving and then they're like insecure and challenged and they want to shut it down quick and they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear about the God who still moves today. They like the God that's stuck in the Bible. Not when he gets out of there, that's that's where you you lose control. But I realize that it also exposes we don't there's more. And when people think they have it all and they have it all together, and then you see there's more, you either yield to it or you shut it out. Uh, I get challenged because, like, I'll read stories like, you know, like with Heidi Baker. I was just reading a testimony from her where she was doing a conference in Africa and God spoke to her and said, call up, call up everyone who has demons. And she's never done a deliverance before. So she goes, does anyone have demons that keep you up at night? Come up here. And then about 30 people come up. And she's like, what do I do now, God? God said, told her, get rid of them. So she just prays, and then all of a sudden, all 30 people simultaneously get delivered from demons, like going on the floor, slithering like snakes, to getting set free. Oh, yeah. 
See, there's more in this thing. There's a more of the gospel that needs to trigger us. And when we hear testimonies, we can either shut our heart out or be jealous like that didn't happen to me. See, that's another thing. If you're like, like I notice it's easy to look at someone else or look at other people and you have an unhealthy like envy or jealousy and it's like it's twisted, it's demonic. But what it does is it brings you into comparison, and then you're like, here's the thing, you're responsible for the grace on your life, not theirs. But what I realized, there's a godly jealousy too. What a godly jealousy looks like is if you see someone moving in power or someone with a deep relationship with God, and you look at that, and your, your heart gets quenched with a godly jealousy, I have to have this. Yeah. Then you can celebrate the person without idolizing him or diminishing them. But you go after him because everything's yes and amen in Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, I, I realized something that's amazing. God's, God's all in. Jesus is fully invested in this gospel. And it says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But what if you could have the, the, as much of the Holy Spirit as you're willing to yield of yourself? What if you could have as much of God as you're willing to go after? Like, I love that God, there's no end to him. There's never a place where you're like, I've arrived. God is so infinite, we could spend eternity searching him out and finding new things and being blown in awe. I think heaven is going to be a continual, mind-blown wrecked by his love and his goodness and his character and his nature like we cannot exhaust God it's amazing to me that we only have four gospels yes because you know John like ends his gospel with like if if, if the, the works that God did were counted like like it says this, John 21, verse 25. And there are also many other things Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose not even the world itself could contain the books that would be written. <laughs> so if God moves in a way, we're like, that's not in the Bible. Right there. That just shuts that argument down. Yeah. Why? Because God's infinite. And there's always more. Yeah. I love, uh, there's a story I heard from Mel Tari, how they took that passage, preached the gospel to all creation, and like understanding, they're like, wow, we have authority over all creation. And they actually like read it that way. So they're walking, and there's a poisonous snake there, and they're, they'd be like, you stay there and you don't move until we cross and the snake would be stuck there and they'd walk across. That's in Indonesia. And one guy was actually running from some Muslims who were trying to kill him. And he like jumped in the river and started swimming and all of a sudden all these like uh, crocodiles or alligators, wherever they have there, start swimming towards them. And they're, they're like sitting there laughing, waiting for this guy to die. And then he's just, no. And then the alligator swam away. Didn't even touch him. I want this God. Yeah. 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 See, Jesus. Luke, chapter ten. You know, verse two. It says. And he said to him, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of harvest to send out laborers in his harvest. You know, every time Jesus prayed this, he sent out people to heal the sick. What is he meaning by laborers? People to go out and bring the kingdom of God. People to demonstrate the power of God. It says the, the, the gospel is like the gospel of the kingdom is not a matter of talk, but of power. And Paul showed it not in word, but in demonstration of the power and the spirit, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Right. Do you know when God moves, he gets the credit for it? 
Yes. If you build a nice discipleship program or this or that, you, you can take the credit for that. But if God does something completely supernatural, he's the one that gets the glory. He's the one who gets the credit. And when you put faith, you don't put faith in the strategy, but you put faith in the living God. That's the purpose of miracles. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See, if I'm in a situation, I don't need wisdom of men. I need the power of God. If a famine strikes this land, we don't need good wisdom on how to avoid it, but we need God who multiplies food. If people are dying all around us, we need the God who raises the dead. See, so our faith needs to be in the power of God and not the wisdom of men. And something about celebrating the testimony of God because his works are to be remembered, his works are to be praised, his works bring him glory. But it's interesting, it says, verse 9, heal the sick there, say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. You know, verse 17, I love this, it says, the 70 return with joy, saying, Lord, even demons are subject to us in your name. I love that he didn't tell them to cast out demons, they just stumbled across it. They went out to heal the sick, and all of a sudden demons started leaving, and they're like, wow, like we could tell demons to leave. Then I love this passage. It says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents, scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. One thing that challenges me is when I read these passages and I see words like all. What does all mean? Like, I know Jesus is not a liar. I know my understanding of what he says is growing and my faith in what he says is growing. But when I read the word all, I'm pretty sure that means all. And I did a, a Greek study and it's really unique. It actually means all. In Texas, it means oil. Huh? All the oil. But it says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Amen. Here's the thing. You cannot take credit for the power of God. You can't take credit when God moves through you. Like, you can't. That's not yours. It's God doing it through you. That's amazing. But you can't take credit for it. But we can't rejoice. We're children of God. We're in heaven. We're his. <laughs> and there's something that says, right after that, it's, it says, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and revealed them to babies. There's something about simple, simple trust of God. Paul was concerned with this when he warned the Corinthians. I, I'm worried that someone has, has you know, pulled you away from the simplicity or seduced you from the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. There's something about the simplicity that's in Jesus that works a lot better. I realize with praying for miracles, guess what? You simplify your prayer and it works better. Why? Because it's him who has the power. It's not actually your prayer that does it. It's God backing up your prayer. Your prayer just points. And there's not a magic word in your prayer that, you know? If I say an extra thee or thou, like. But there's something about, you know, it says you've revealed these to babies. See, it's the wisdom of men. It says knowledge puffs up. It's when we're prideful about things and we think we figured God out and we have them and we've done it. We got our bachelors and our doctorates and we know exactly how to... But there's something in the simplicity that only a little child can enter in. And we need to approach this thing, the things of God like little children. Little children get excited. They're like, yes, this is amazing. I remember Zakiah. Like, he was walking through the store, saw a lady with a boot, and he just ran up and went for it and prayed for her. Just like, what did you do to me? Wow. We, we took him to the street with us just to see him and Haven, actually, the both of them. But one day we took him to the street, and he watched eight people get healed back to back. And it was so funny because 
He'd be like, can I pray for you? They'd be like, oh, how sweet. And then all of a sudden he'd pray, and then they get healed. They'd be like, yeah. what just happened? Yeah. 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 Why? Because there's something about taking what God says simply. You know, the Bible says believers will lay hands on the sick, not might, not could. Will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. It says the prayer of faith will heal the sick, not might. It says you've been given all authority, not some. See, when we read this in context, like what Jesus is saying, our natural mind will try to shut this down because we're wiser than that. But like, he doesn't actually mean all. He might mean some, but not all. No, he says all. But we're growing. I'm convinced if, if Jesus laid hands on someone, they would be healed, right? Yes. Well, guess what? We're growing into his image and likeness from glory to glory. It says we're beholding as in a mirror the, same, the, the image of God, and we're being transformed into that same image from glory to glory. So guess what? As you become more and more and more like Christ, God moves more and more like you. And if we're moving to the full measure and stature of Jesus, like it says in Ephesians, if Jesus laid hands, that person would be healed. So guess what? If you say you step out and you want to see, like, you step out and you don't see it. It just doesn't happen, and that happens. Guess what? We're growing. We're growing into the full measure and stature of Christ. What I realize is when you step out and say nothing happens, it's still something's happening. It's humbling your heart, and it's positioning you for more grace, which is God's power flowing through your life. See, God gives grace to the humble. Humble. What is that? I really... Humble is where you're not dependent on your own strength, your own efforts. Humbleness is where it, it's not about you. I'm going to share one story about, like, then um, we're going to eat some yummy food. But... So I remember I was going to a Bible college that didn't normally believe in spiritual gifts. And I finally got the boldness to preach on the kingdom of God and power. And it was crazy because that day we went to a bank and there's a late, the manager was at the working and we just pray over the manager and she gets wrecked. And she's like, are you, how are you channeling energy like that? We're like, it's the Holy Spirit. And then we had the terror teller, her worker, lay hands on her neck, and her neck gets healed right there in the bank. And then I'm just wrecked. I'm like, so I finally get the boldness to preach this. And then preach and then call up people and pray, and nothing happens. And it's like, and it was humbling. I felt sick to my stomach. And I'm like, God, like, what are you doing? Like, why, what? Like, I finally preached you. I finally, like, preached miracles. And all these people don't believe in miracles. And when I prayed, nothing happened. And I was sick to my stomach. I was mad. I was like, God, like, we go to the streets. We see miracles. Why isn't this happening here? Then God spoke to me and said, I'm humbling you so I could do more through you. And then we went to the street after that, and right after that, we saw an explosion of miracles. And then all of a sudden, things started exploding even more. God started moving even more. But first, it took that humbling. First, it took that stepping out. If that's rising up in you, go after it. If something's rising up in you to see God move, go after it and start celebrating. Start feeding yourself the, on the testimonies of God. Start reading the testimonies. When you read a testimony in a Bible or you hear it from someone, start praising them for it. So like, God, oh, that's amazing. Guess what? If you need healing in your body, start celebrating healing in others. Yes. If someone gets healed and you don't, I, I've seen people get upset and they get offended at God, but I've also seen people start celebrating when God heals someone else. And guess what? Thank you, Jesus. They either get healed or they start healing people. One of the two. Yeah. 